today we're going to be making peanut butter and banana cookies so to start with you just get your three bananas uh, preferably bananas that have a good amount of brown spots on them just so that they're uh, ripe and they take, they taste a lot nicer when you cook them so you just get the three bananas in your bowl and mash them as best you can So after literally a few seconds, I use the tape measure in order to, to get it in track. Use a spoon, whichever you want to use. So you get it in track, and you go with your three tablespoons of peanut butter or cashew butter, whatever but nut butter you like, like you know, if you have your preferences. So, one. tablespoon of honey, I know I'm just eyeballing it, sort of, you know, and then that much maybe, just because it gets too messy when you're trying to pour it into the tablespoon yolk and it gets stuck in everything. Then you go in with your oats and any sort of seeds, like I think there's pumpkin seeds and that, and other sort of seeds, whatever you, you prefer, whatever tastes good to you, throw them in, and then just when everything's in the bowl, Get your spoon, spatula, whichever, and just mix it together. So, if uh, you feel the mixture is sort of dry enough, you can still add more honey and peanut butter. I just put it in the microwave so it helps it bind more together when it's hot. I think that's just the stigma that we have, though. I'm not sure about the science behind that, right now, to be honest. Uh, the oven's just been preheated at 180 degrees, so while that's preheating, just been making that and then I'm going to dish it out onto the tray. Then if you want to make one big huge cookie dough, I suppose you can, but I normally just go with a load of wherever small ones, put it back out of the tray, keep going, obviously, with the mixture's gone, so just go straight in with your hands, so I'll go either side, and that kind of thing, you've got how small, you know, <laughs> Uh, and how big or how small you want to just keep on until it's in, the, in a ball. Make sure it's in a ball first, then when you put it on, flatten it down onto the tray. And that should be good to go. Okay. Because there's no baking soda or baking powder or anything in it, they're not really going to expand much. So you don't have to worry like too much about space in between them when you can put them so pack them beside each other. So when you shave them into your cookies, I'm just going to a few wonky ones there, small ones, but it doesn't matter, whichever you can get out of it, whatever you feel, just throw them into the oven at 180 for 15 minutes. So 15 minutes. Keep obviously keep an eye on them, they might cook quicker, they might cook slower, they might cook forever, but just keep your eye on them. Dinner, lunch portion of the meal, we've got a chili. St. Carney here, we've got a, a vegan soy plant based mince, just 300 grams of that. Or if you prefer to go with the meat option, 300 grams of lean mince would do the job for you as well. All right, other ingredients that we have a, a diced red pepper, red bell pepper. We have three to four cloves of garlic. With this stage, you know how much I love garlic, so if you want a little bit more, throw it in there. A red onion diced up. We're gonna need a tablespoon of honey, paprika, chili flakes, or fresh chilies if you like, uh, cinnamon, cumin, a chopped tomatoes, kidney beans, drain, very important, and then the juice of one lime. All right, so that's getting a bit too hot for us on the pan now, but we're gonna get going. All right, so first off, going in there, we have the onions and garlic going into our pan. Just, we want to brown them off, keep them moving, kind of saute them in the oil that's been heating up on the pan. Alright. 
and we're gonna throw the chili flakes in with them. About a tablespoon, it's dependent on your taste for spice though. If, if you wanna do fresh chilies, maybe take the seeds out if you can't handle the spice that much. And if you're doing the chili flakes, just be wary of how much you're putting in, whether you like it spicy or you want to calm down on the heat a little bit. For me personally, I like to go with about a tablespoon because it is a chili dish after all. Okay, so we're gonna keep that going for about two to three minutes. You can see they're browning off, getting to like a, a golden color. Everything has got a nice layer of that oil over it now. Okay, so once we have them to that level, we're gonna get the pepper in there to keep the onions, garlic, and cheese company. Just stirring that around, and then we can get straight to adding the mince in. With the mince, both for if you're using a vegan mince or if you're using um, a mince meat. We're just looking to get it to a brown color. So chopping it up, getting it into nice small pieces, about six to eight minutes until it browns off. And then we're gonna add in our chopped tomatoes to let it simmer away for another 20. The only thing about this dish is that literally 10 minutes on the pan and then just let it simmer away for another 20. So we're gonna pop that straight in, taking off the sheet of paper. Breaking it all up with the wooden spoon that you're using. And roughly about six to eight minutes until that turns brown. And as you can see that that, that mince is gone to a nice brown color after about six, seven minutes. So we're gonna add in the spices and then the chopped tomatoes. After that, all we have to do is let it simmer away. About five minutes before the end, we're gonna add in the drained kidney beans a tablespoon of honey and the juice of the lime and, and that's it. You've got your dinner in less than 25 minutes. And for 20 of that, you don't even have to be at the pan, just giving it the odd stir. So a teaspoon of paprika. All right, then we've got a tablespoon of cumin going in. If you want to be very particular, you can, you can get the spoon out, but probably used to doing it so often myself that I'm just getting the olive oil on it. So a tablespoon of the kiln gone in. All right, and then just a pinch of cinnamon, about half, half a teaspoon even of the cinnamon, just to give it a little pinch of flavor. Okay, we'll mix all that up. Just wanna make sure everything in the pan is coated in the spices. And then the chopped Tomatoes are going in, let it simmer away for 20 minutes, and then it's nearly going to put the feel. Alright, and if you've had sheep pan carne before, you kind of know what that smell is like, so if you find you're not getting that smell, just add in a little bit more of, of the cumin. Tablespoon, tablespoon and a half, should be plenty to give you that flavour. Okay. After that, we've got the chopped tomatoes going in, full tin of chopped tomatoes. Mix everything about. next 20 minutes, stirring it every five minutes, and after that we're good to go. So 20 minutes in total, remember at the 15 minute mark we want to be getting in the kidney beans, the juice of the lime, and then the honey, and that's it. In terms of serving this dish, you can do it with a rice, something like iceberg lettuce, a homemade guacamole, or another great way to do it is a baked potato or a baked sweet potato, stick that in the oven, and use this as the contents on top even for the contents uh, of a nachos dish. So tortilla chips, put your chili con carne over it, and it makes a great meal. The toppings are kind of up to you, whether that be sour cream, salsa, cheese, it's up to your personal preference. But we'll give you a few ideas on the best, well not the best, but a few ideas just to accompany this dish, and then to say it's up to your personal preference, what you'd like to have of it. 
Perfect. All right, guys, so that's been simmering away now for about 15 minutes. So we're gonna crack on and putting our honey in, the juice of the lion, and then the kidney beans. Last but not least, so squeezing in the juice of the lion. Try to get it all in there. And the honey, again, just eyeballing. If you are very particular and have a bit of OCD, maybe get your spoon out, but we want a little sleep over a gram or two here and there. So honey straight in. Once the honey and lime have gone in, just mix that all around. And then we'll finish it off with the kidney beans going in, and we're just gonna let it simmer away for another five minutes before serving up. As we said earlier, loads of options to serve this, guys, uh, of what to serve this with, rather, and we will help you out with them. But it is really up to your personal preference in terms of sauces, in terms of cheese toppings, carbs, whether you use your rice, sweet potato, uh, white potato, it's completely up to yourself. All right, so now that's all covered in the honey and lime juice. So the kidney beans are going to go in. Make sure you do to drain them. So there's, there's a fair bit of water or with the brine that they're in with. Make sure you drain that off before you put it in to the saucepan. Otherwise, your yeah, dinner will be ruined. Okay, mixing them up with everything that's already in the pan. And we're just going to leave that for another five minutes. What you would usually get out of this, guys, is about three to four portions. So, three to four lunches and dinners after 20, 25 minutes work. It's not a bad return.